when it comes to histamine intolerance, so much of it can be resolved with a healthier gut. Not all, but some. High histamine foods tend to be aged and fermented. Certain good greens like spinach is a high histamine food, avocado, shellfish, it, a lot of um, dairy grains can be higher histamine, nuts, not all nuts. Like there's sort of some argument about what nuts are okay when you're doing a low histamine diet. You have to eliminate enough of it to get some relief if you're going to try a low histamine diet, which we should talk about as kind of a good diagnostic tool. If you can get some relief and still keep some of them in, sometimes that's a little bit better. The low histamine diet, ironically, is terrible for your gut. It's not very diverse. We took out a lot of vegetables. We took a lot of, because they're high histamine, and we took out all those fermented foods. If you're going to go on a low histamine diet, it's a great diagnostic tool. If you take all those foods out and all those symptoms go away, you know you're having some sort of histamine intolerance. Now, you can't live on that diet forever. It's incredibly restrictive. It's overall not super healthy. Now, some people do have to return to it from time to time when their histamine intolerance is at it, you know, it's flared up, but it's not really something we'd want to keep you on. So when you think about histamine, the best analogy is a bucket. You know, you've got a flow coming in and then the drain coming out. The drain coming out is your enzymes, it's usually liver detoxification or some way that you're moving that out. So you can have too much coming in so let's say you've got SIBO. So you've got these bacteria in your gut that are making more histamine. Plus you're trying to be good and you're eating your avocados and you're eating, you know, spinach salads and you're maybe you're eating your fermented foods or and so you might not be if you had SIBO, but if you have, you know, again, some sort of gut based infection or even chronic infections like Epstein-Barr some of, and who knows, maybe COVID, like again, some people are getting histamine stuff triggered all of a sudden after they've had COVID. So certain infections could increase your histamine production. So that's what's coming into the bucket or you're eating a lot of those foods. Most of them on that list are healthy. Lemons are on that list, um, tea. Um, so you might be having a lot of stuff come into your bucket and then you need to make sure that you can clear it out. So the easiest thing with to kind of know if this is you is to stop the flow coming in. So if you can decrease those foods for seven to 14 days and you feel much better, you kind of dumped your bucket essentially, right? We can also like spruce up how you're processing those. Like, can we give you some of those nutrients? You can actually take Dow enzyme. They sell it in a capsule. It's rather expensive. So it's not a really great long-term solution, but it can really help. You can kind of decrease what's coming in and you can enhance what's coming out. And that will help histamine intolerance. So I kind of use the low histamine diet as a diagnostic test. If you decrease those foods and you feel better, you stop itching, your anxiety gets better, your insomnia gets better, your skin clears up, your joint pain goes away, your digestion is better, your acid reflux is better. Then we know you've got some sort of histamine intolerance. It does not tell me where what your root cause is, but now you know, like I need to investigate some of those root causes that we just talked about. And a healthy gut is always the place to start because it's going to impact really truly everything.